Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin has called on those who want to balik kampung to do a COVID-19 self-test before making their journey across state lines. In fact, he said people living in high-contact and mobility settings are encouraged to conduct regular COVID-19 testing. According to Bernama, Kairi said in his Twitter update today that there is only 1.6% left before Malaysia hits the 90% threshold for the government to allow interstate travel to resume. He said those who want to return to their hometowns to see their elderly parents should do the RTK test to keep their loved ones safe. As of yesterday, 88.4% of the country's adult population have completed their COVID-19 vaccination. Last month, Prime Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said interstate activity will be allowed when 90% of adults in Malaysia are inoculated against COVID-19. Meanwhile, new infections climbed for the second straight day to 9,380, with Sarawak still leading with the most daily cases at 1,503. The nation's cumulative COVID-19 cases now stand at 2.3 million. Datin Sri Rosmah Manso cried on the witness stand in the Kuala Lumpur High Court today as she neared the conclusion of her testimony in her defence, reiterating that the corruption charges against her were malicious and selective prosecution against her. She said the ones who should have been prosecuted are former Education Minister Dato Sri Matze Khalid, ex-Education Ministry Sekjen Tan Sri Dr Madina Muhammad, Madinah's successor, Datuk Sri Alias Ahmad, her former aide, Datuk Rizal Manso, and Jepak Holdings' former managing director, Saidi Abang Samsudin. But the prosecution chose to cruelly pin the blame on her, she said, and broke down on the witness stand. Rosma also denied having an overbearing nature, as alleged by the prosecution based on a secretly taped telephone conversation she had with her husband, Datuk Sri Najib Raza. She said it was a private conversation between her and her husband, and she was merely stating her views. The hearing continues tomorrow, with her cross-examination by the prosecution led by Datuk Sri Gopal Sri Ram. Malaysia Digital Economy Corp or MDEC Chairman Dato Dr. Rais Hussein Muhammad Arif has resigned. In a statement, Rais said he communicated his desire to step down to Finance Minister Tengku Dato Sri Zafrul Abdul Aziz in mid-August and to Communications and Multimedia Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa early last month. Rais, who has been in the news recently over his remarks about Transport Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Wee Ka Siong, did not give any specific reason for his resignation. He said his journey in MDEC has been very intense and enriching, particularly as it is a critical agency that spearheads and drives the digital economy of the nation. He said he has been vocal in many ways driving these changes, as time is of immense essence and that he has never compromised his principles in performing his duties. While it would have been much easier to just follow instructions from the shareholder ministry and or the supervisory ministry, he said that would be tantamount to a huge battle of conscience. Last week, Rice criticised Wee via Twitter over his stance on the cabotage policy issue, which concerned the reinstatement of the cabotage exemption for submarine cable repairs. This prompted shipping associations to lambast him over his disparaging remarks. Malaysia collected 63.3 billion ringgit in income tax in the first seven months of this year. In a reply to a question in Parliament, Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul Abdul Aziz said the sum comprises 41.8 billion ringgit from companies and 21.5 billion ringgit from individuals. As for the previous year, Malaysia collected 99.6 billion ringgit in income tax, comprising 66.5 billion from companies and 33.1 billion from individuals. Comparatively, income tax collected from companies last year was higher than the revised estimate of 59.4 billion ringgit in the Fiscal Outlook 2021 report, though individual income tax collection in the same period was lower than the revised estimate of 35.9 billion. This year, the government expects income tax collection from companies to rebound to 64.6 billion ringgit, while individual income tax should amount to 40. 
22.4 billion. Malaysia's income tax collection in 2020 was lower than that in 2019, owing to COVID-19 shocks to the economy, which resulted in over 800 companies being forced to wind up between March and December last year. For 2019, Malaysia's income tax collection from companies came in at 70.9 billion ringgit, while individual income tax stood at 41.9 billion ringgit, for a combined total of 112.8 billion ringgit. Petronas is reported to have strongly objected to the Sudan transitional government's move to confiscate the national oil company's assets in the African nation. Quoting sources, Daily Sabah reported the move was based on allegations the assets were acquired through illegal means during the rule of ousted leader President Omar al-Bashir. It said the land where the Petronas Sudan complex currently stands was acquired and registered under Nada Properties, a subsidiary of Petronas in Sudan. According to its sources, Sudan has transferred the ownership of Nada Properties to Sudan's Ministry of Finance and deprived Petronas of its rightful ownership of the company. Following the toppling of al-Bashir, Sudanese authorities formed a committee tasked with dismantling the institutions set up by the previous regime and retrieving assets that were allegedly acquired through illegal means. However, Daily Sabah's sources reportedly said that to date, no information has been shared with Malaysian authorities regarding the allegations of corruption by al-Bashir involving activities in Malaysia. Other foreign investors in Sudan, including those from Pakistan, Qatar and Turkey, are also said to be facing similar predicaments. <laughs>